Hey guys, this is T from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to another episode of RPG Maker MZ The Basics Tutorials. Today we're going to go over the Tile Sets tab. Let's get started. So in the Tile Sets tab, if you open your database, you'll notice that it has a section here called Tile Sets. This lists the tile sets that you currently have set up in your database. By default, you have Overworld, Outside, Inside, Dungeon, Sci-Fi Outside, and Sci-Fi Inside. This will give you plenty of information to see how to set your tile sets up when you put your own custom ones in later. If you have more than 10 total tile sets that you would like to use in your database, simply click this Change the Maximum and go ahead and add a few more. Let's take a look at one of these tile sets. This one is an overworld tile set. Here is a mode option with a drop down menu. Right now with the overworld tile set, it's set to world type, but you can also choose area type. These are more used for outside, inside, and dungeon tile sets. What the mode does is changes the way certain tiles are drawn on top of each other, and it changes the way battle backs are shown. I'll explain the battle backs right now. In the world type, it'll show a battle back that tries to match the world type tile that you're using. If you have it on area type, instead you'll see a blurry background of the map that you're standing on. And then it also changes the way certain tiles are drawn over each other. We'll go over that more when we get into the help file. Next we have what's called image tabs. We have A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, B, C, D, and E. And each one of these is a separate image of its own. Let's take a look at one of those. If you go into your images folder, in your game folder, and select tile sets. You can take a look at the tile sets that you have available in your game. Here's an example of an A1 tile set. Please notice the arrangement. We'll take a look at the tile set A in the help file. Tile set A is composed mostly of auto tiles. And what auto tiles are is a collection of six tiles. You see three sections here, but this is also sectioned off into four 48 by 48 tiles itself. So for a total of six tiles. I'm not going to explain how to make your own auto tiles today, but you can make your own auto tiles and use them in MZ. Here's the arrangement of the A1 tile set. Notice that it has different groupings. We have A, B, D, C, and E. Where these tiles are placed determine how they'll show up on the map, whether or not they have borders, if they overlay each other, or if they're animated. These are animated tiles, and you can't really tell the difference, but each one of these frames is a little bit different. The way the engine plays these is by playing frame 1, 2, 3, and then 2 again. Each one of these arranged this way are auto tiles, but not each one is animated. For instance, these ones here in the D section. Now these ones are also animated here in the E section, Instead of playing the frames from left to right, like these auto tiles, it plays them top to bottom in vertical strips. So these three is an animation, these three is another animation, and so on. In addition to being arranged a certain way, you have to make sure that your tile set is 768 by 576 pixels. You can't change the size of the tile set. Okay, let's move on to A2 tile sets. The A2 tile sets also have a specific size. This is not the entire size shown here. In fact, we'll open one so we can take a look. They also have a specific configuration. This also plays on what we talked about earlier with the world type and the area type. We'll see the differences here, aside from the battle back differences. First, let's open one up and see what it looks like. Okay, here you see what the entire tile set looks like. On the help file, you'll notice that they only show a preview, and this is to explain how these work. So if you have your game set to field type or world type, these will draw a little bit differently than if you didn't. Tile set 1 will draw normally, but tile set 2 will combine with tile set 1 and draw on top of tile set 1 on your map. It's the same with tile set 3. You can draw this one independently, but 4 will draw on top of tile set 3 and combine with each other on the map. Otherwise, the tiles act the same. You can tell the difference by looking inside the editor and count the first four on this side down. This is the left side of the tile set and the right side of the tile set. The left side of the tile set are auto tiles and base tiles and the right side are decoration tiles. So this one will draw on its own and this one will draw with that background on it. You see? Even if we draw in a place where that one isn't already, it will make its own but with the dark grass on top. And it's the same with this one. We already actually have some of this on here, so it doesn't look like I'm doing much. But then if we add the other one, you'll notice that it draws right on top of it. 
And before we move on to A3, one thing to keep in mind is this tile set also can't change size. It has to be the same size if you're going to put your custom tile set in. It should be 768 pixels by 576 pixels. The next image section in the database is the A3 section. Now we don't see much here because we're on a world tile set, so let's change to an outside tile set. These are used for buildings. Let's open one of those up to see what they look like as a sheet. Just like with the other tile sets, this has to remain the same size. The size of this tile set is 768 pixels by 384 pixels. They're also auto tiles, but they're in a different configuration than the auto tiles we saw on the other two tile sheets. The A4 tile set is for walls, and the size of the A4 tile set is 768 by 720 pixels. Let's take a look at that as well. You'll notice that these are auto tiles too, and there are two different formats. We have the wall auto tile, the ceiling auto tile, and the first type of auto tile that we saw in the first two tabs. And finally we have tile set B through tile set E. One thing I'd like to mention before I talk about those is that tile set A1, A2, A3, and A4 are all auto tiles. Then we move on to tile set A5. This one's size is 384 pixels by 768 pixels. None of these are auto tiled, so you'll use them to paint floors and such on your map. In addition to floors, you have stairs, other types of ground, and then you can also put specific parts of cliffs up without it auto tiling with this set. Another thing to keep in mind about the A5 tile set, if you're making your own custom tile set, it's important to keep this tile right here transparent because it's used to remove the tiles from the lower layers. Now let's move on to the B, C, D, and E tile sets. These are kind of what you see is what you get. You can grab the image off of the tile and place it on your map. You won't find any auto tiles in here. Let's take a look at a B tile set sheet. Notice that there's a transparent square in this one as well. This is equally important to keep transparent because this will remove the tiles from the upper layers. Notice that you can cycle through these images by selecting the A, B, and C tabs down here. Now if we put a D tile set in here, then you'll notice that a new tab shows up for D. And this will show up in your map editor as well. You'll be able to use these on your map. Let's talk about tile passability. I'm sure you noticed that in this view here, there's little X's and O's all over the tile set. These are to determine passability. X's mean that the player can't walk on this tile. If you'd like to change it so that there is passability on this tile, you simply click it and change it to a circle. There's another type of tile that isn't on this tile set, and that's the star passability tile. Let's switch to tab B and look at that. Notice this tree has no passability at the bottom, but star passability at the top. And what this does is it allows the player to walk through this tile, but it draws the graphic on top of the player, so it looks like the player is walking behind the tree. So when you're adding a tile set to your system, you're going to have to go through and add passability for each tile. There's another type of passability called four direction passability, and this is great for things like ladders. If you'll notice, it allows up and down passability, but not side to side. That way, if your player's partway through the ladder, they can't just walk off the side. This is great for cliffs, too. Then we have ladder passability, and if this is selected on a tile, then what happens is while the player is moving in an upward direction, they look like they're walking normally but if they're walking in a downward direction, they will face upward, so it looks like they're crawling down a ladder. Then we have the bush tile, and what the bush tile does is it makes it so that the player appears partly transparent, and the graphic that has the bush tag appears to hover over the player's legs a little bit, almost like you're standing in long grass or something. If you'll remember in our last tutorial, we talked about how the exclamation mark can change some things for certain sprite characters, and one of those things is this bush tile transparency. If you have an exclamation mark in front of your file name for a sprite sheet, the image won't become transparent behind the grass, or whatever other thing you have the tag on. Then we have the counter tile, and this is something that's used for countertops. These four tiles here are counters by default, and what that means is that if you interact with an event on the other side of this tile, it'll act like you're standing right in front of it. So you can talk to an NPC behind a counter, and you don't have to go around and directly talk to them. The next one to go over is the damage floor. If you set this tag on top of a tile, what happens is when your player walks over it, they're going to take 10 damage. It looks like two little spikes, like right here in this poison tile. And then lastly, we have the terrain tag, and this does absolutely nothing, yet 
You can use this in eventing, use it in conditional branches, and some plugins will use it too. It's just a great way to store information. Also, we have a note box down here. This can be used just to take notes on your tile sets. Also, this section is sometimes used by plugin creators. If it is, they'll explain how to use it in their help section of their plugin. So now that I'm done going through the help file and the tile set tab in the database, one thing that I want to mention is if you want to make custom tile sets for your game, by far the easiest way to do this is by opening an existing tile set and following the patterns that they've already put in place. Make sure that the things fit in the sections the same way and that they're the same type of tile set in each section. Make sure to go back to the help file and read it carefully if you're going to put tile sets in your game. There's a lot of helpful information there and it'll keep you from making some mistakes. Make sure that you use these existing tile sets to your advantage if you're going to customize the tile sets in your game. Okay, that's the end of this tutorial. If you like this video, definitely give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and join our Discord. We have so much fun there. Come and join us, guys. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!